welcome to the ONTV Cooking Show. I'm Joey Tysick, a production coordinator here at ONTV. And today I'm going to show you how I make my venison marinade. I like to make things super simple. Um, I like the aspect of cooking, but I don't have a ton of time on my hands, so I try to just speed things up as quickly as I can. So I got some venison here today, and then I got a, a truckload of ingredients here. I got just your normal salt. A little bit of olive oil, some red wine vinegar, a red wine. Now, normally you'd want to use a dry. Uh, the only thing I had was sweet, so we're just going to go with that. And it should turn out just fine. It's just for a little bit of ac acidity between the vinegar and the wine. Um, we've got your black pepper, some minced garlic, a little bit of rosemary, and some soy sauce. I like to use the less sodium soy sauce. I'm a little sensitive to salt myself, so typically I just don't like the taste as much. So that's just my preference, but you can use regular soy sauce if you want. Uh, it's all up to preference. Um, and then of course we got our venison here. I chose a chop today, which is a really good, or a tenderloin, really good piece of meat uh, from the deer. Uh, the one thing that you want to make sure that you look at is you look for any silver skin left over. Now most of the time once you go to a butcher, you're not going to have to worry about it, but I did see there's a little bit right here on this piece and you just want to take that off. It's usually a connective tissue that, you know, you don't want to have on your meat. So I'm just going to cut just a little bit of it off. You want to be careful not to cut too much into the meat itself. Um, so once you have a little grasp of it, just going to cut that off and that'll just make sure that the meat's nice and tender. You can throw that away. No worries there. So, to get this started, like I said, it's super simple. So we're gonna take our ingredients and we're gonna start with the red wine. And the best way to do this is to pour it into this Ziploc bag. I like to take the gallon bags. And most of the time you can measure this out. I'm more of an eyeball kind of guy. Um, so this asks for a cup, uh, a quarter cup of red wine. So we're just gonna pour a little bit in there into the bag. That should be about good. So there's that. Then we're going to grab the garlic and it asks for about two cloves of garlic. Grab myself a spoon here. And normally, like, because this is just one, this is kind of serving, you could probably serve two people with one tenderloin. Or if you're super hungry like I am, I have two for some that I've pre-prepped that we're going to cook later. So I'm going to put just about two scoops of this garlic into the bag. We're going to put our garlic back. And then it asks for two tablespoons of soy sauce. Again, I don't like soy sauce a ton, so I usually go a little bit lighter than some people. That should be about good. Usually just one little pour is enough. Um, and then we need the red wine vinegar. Um, this is for our acidity. And the acidity and the olive oil from these ingredients, that's going to really break down some of the connected tissue in the meat. And once you let it marinate overnight or a few hours, it's going to really break down those tissues and it's going to allow your meat to be really tender. And that's exactly what everybody likes. Um, I think the one thing that a lot of people say about their venison is that it tastes very gamey and it just... I don't know, I guess a lot of people think it's not as fancy, but I tend to differ and I feel like you can do a lot of different things with venison. And it's one of my favorites because it's so lean. There's not a lot of fat to venison, but it does make it a little bit trickier to cook. So you gotta be a little bit careful on that side because it can dry out really easily. Um, and you can kind of not ruin the meat, but it just makes it a lot tougher, a lot quicker. Um, so that's one reason also that I won't be putting salt in this marinade per se, because I don't want the meat to dry out while it's cooking. So we'll salt it after we cook. So now that we got all these ingredients in here, we're just going to take the bag, we're kind of going to swirl it around, make sure it mixes up a little bit, just nice and easy, nothing crazy. And just make sure it gets mixed up a little bit. And then once we have got that done, oh, I got to add olive oil. One last little bit. And this is a half cup. So this is a little bit more because typically what you want to do is you want to have about one third part um, acid and then two thirds, so to speak, of olive oil. 
So we're just going to give that a nice mix again. Let those sit in there. And then we're going to add a little bit of the pepper. And the pepper is going to be about a teaspoon or so. Normally you'd, you'd also want to use a more coarse pepper because it tends to get more flavors into there. We're just going to go with the pure ground black pepper. Not really a big difference, but just the little things. Just going to give it a little shake in there. Should be good. And then we're going to add some rosemary just to, it kind of goes along with the earthy textures of venison. Of course, it goes into that gamey talk that people have. There's my beeper for the oven. That's perfect timing. So we're going to throw the rosemary in here. I don't have much left in this bottle, so I'm just going to dump it all in there and give it another good mix. And then we're going to take our meat and we're just going to throw it in there. We're going to make sure it's nice and covered and we're going to seal it in the bag. Make sure to get all the air out that you can. Seal it up nice and tight. And then I give it another good couple shakes here and there to get the everything mixed up nice and easy and let it sit. And then there you go. You have your marinade ready to go. Super simple. So we're going to put this in the fridge and it's going to sit in the fridge for about mm, eight to 12 hours. It's kind of up to preference. You can do it shorter, um, but I like the longer that it sits, the more the marinade is going to really sink into that venison and it's really going to get all those juices and flavors into the meat. So we're going to throw this in the fridge right now. We're going to leave it in there. And then I have my pre-prepped venison. And as we'll see, it's a little bit, well, I'll take it out. Put it in the glass container here that we're going to cook in. And as you can tell on this venison, everything's all nice and coated. It is a little bit slimy but that's because it's I've been trying to get it to room temperature so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take it over to the sink here and what I'm gonna do just really briefly is I'm gonna make sure that I get all that marinade off the edge you don't want it to be too thick so that the meat will sink in so we're just gonna kind of roughly brush it off and get as much off as we can set it in our bowl same thing with the other piece kind of shake it off Get some of that marinade and that garlic just off the edges, just so it cooks a little bit quicker, a little bit nicer and more even. Because everything should already be nice and soaked into the venison. And then we're going to get rid of our marinade. We don't really want to use that really again. And then I've been preheating my oven to 450 degrees. And then we're just going to throw it in there and... Uh, it should be good to go. One other thing that I will mention is that you can do this on the grill as well. And the grill is going to make it just a little bit nicer because you can kind of char those edges a little bit. So a nice um, grilling would be nice. But because it's, you know, middle of winter, there's not much grilling going on. But that's what it should look like. Tried to rub off as much that I could um, on, the, on the meat. And we're just going to throw it right in the oven. And now that's going to be in the oven for about 15 to 20 minutes. We'll have to kind of see and wait. And we're going to want to make sure that it's kind of a nice medium rare to a medium. Because again, you can dry out venison really easily. So you just got to be a little bit careful by that. So just try to look at it every few minutes or so. And uh, we'll see you back in about 15 to 20 minutes. ONTV encourages you to go back to school and attend our 10-week video production workshop. Classes meet on Monday nights from 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. and offer instruction on studio production, field production, and non-linear editing. The cost is $55 per person, and upon completion of the class, you get access to ONTV's facilities and equipment to produce your own program or short film. For more information, give ONTV a call at 248-393-1060 or visit orionontv.org today.
and we're back with my venison marinade. It's been just about 20 minutes. I had to, at 15 minutes, I like to check it. Um, I put my knife in there and there's still a little bit of red juice coming up. So let it sit for another five minutes. Um, and I think it turned out perfectly. So then once you pull it out of the oven, you wanna let it sit for about five minutes. Let those juices really soak in after it's cooked. And then we have this lovely venison that's marinated, ready to go. And the last little thing we got to do, put a little bit of salt, just kind of however much you want. I, like I said, I'm sensitive, so I just put a little bit just for a little bit of that extra taste, a little bit of pepper. I did it backwards than what I said, but hey, you get the point. There's the salt. There we go. I'm going to put a little bit more pepper, actually. And there it is. The other thing you can do is if you have um, some fresh rosemary, you can kind of fancy it up and, you know, make it look a little nicer as a presentation. You can put some fresh rosemary off to the side or even on top again if you wanted to. Um, this is a great dish that can go with just about anything. You can uh, cook up some rice, just do some instant rice, maybe in the microwave. That takes like a minute. Or some noodles, some of those pasta sides that you can get. Um, so the, the nice thing about this meal is although you have to wait for the marinade, which is like I said, about eight to 12 hours, once you've done that, you literally just pull it out of the fridge, throw it in the oven, 20 minutes while that's cooking in the oven, you can cook up some rice, cook up some sides, maybe throw some vegetables in the, um, microwave or something or roast them up. And all of a sudden you have this meal that took, I mean, 15, 20 minutes, like I said, and you can impress some people because it looks fancier than it really is. And it's a nice quick dish. But now I need to take a bite of this because I've been smelling it the whole time. So we will see you guys on the next one.